So far this year, over 110 journalists were killed because of their work. Many more were wounded, shot at, beaten, threatened. This is the highest figure on the IPI death watch since we started systematically recording journalist killings in 1997. It is disturbing that in spite of all efforts by journalists and press freedom groups, international organizations and governments aimed at preventing and stopping the violence against journalists, the number of journalists murdered every year has continued to grow. Indeed, part of the reason for this increase in the figures available is that more information about journalist killings is circulated. And this is good, as it shows that we have been able to raise enough awareness about the problem to ensure that it is exposed. But part of the reason is also that our efforts to stop the violence have not been as effective as they should have been. All the resolutions, the trainings, the advocacy have not brought the desired results. 36 journalists were killed so far this year while covering the war in Syria. 16 journalists were murdered in Somalia where killing a journalist to silence them is just too easy. Six journalists were killed in Mexico, captured in the war among drug cartels. Five each were killed in Pakistan and Nigeria, four in Eritrea and the Philippines. A total of 111 journalists were killed so far this year in 26 countries around the world. The problem is both widespread and endemic. I am glad that today, on the eve of the International Day to End Impunity and the anniversary of the massacre of 32 journalists and one single incident in the Philippines in 2009, that IPI once again brings together key players, representatives of international organizations, and journalists to highlight the problem of violence against journalists, analyze developments in this field, and look for solutions that will bring about greater safety for journalists around the world.